Hello, everyone. Today's presentation is about our capstone project, Wendy Sarai Park. Our group members are Andy, Charles, Elia, Isabel, Wahid, and my name is Chen. This presentation will start with the introduction of the project and also talk about business imperative, overview of requirements, review of internal system structure, and the demonstrations. First of all, let's introduce you about our project. Wendy's Array Park is one of the few land condominiums in Alberta that allows for long-term stays for the Array community. It consists of hundreds of individually owned Array lots. And our client requests us to build a web application that can help the administer, owners, renters, and visitors manage Array lots and communication with each other. Therefore, we need to address the following core problems. We need our users can easily use our application. As our client request, we build a calendar system that could show all events on their date. Also, user can get detailed event information by clicking on the event name on calendar. Other than that, we also use simple visual language in our application so that our user can easily find what they need on our website. Another big concern from our client is safety. First, we give different access permissions for different accounts. For example, if a user wants to contact an owner who wants to sell or rent his array law, he doesn't need to register and log in to the account. If a user wants to post a new forum on the website, he needs to log in to a regular account or admin account. If a user only has a visitor account, unfortunately, he cannot post a new forum with his visitor account. He can only read the existing forums if he wants more information. For most management operations, an admin account would be required. Other than access permission, the information of each account will be encrypted automatically. Also, if a user has logged it for a long time, then he need to relog his account to do any operations on the website. Our client also needs this web application allows the user to contact the owners who wants to sell or rent their array lot. If a user is interested in an array lot, he can contact the seller under the sale post by input user's name, message, and contact information. This message will be sent to the owner's email box directly. If a user wants to talk with one of the administrators, he can either send an email or respond to their post on the website. Thanks, everyone. Now I will pass to our next group member, Wahid. Thank you, Shan. In this section, I'm going to go over the key requirements of our project. The first one is marketability. Our client wanted their new website to present a new modern look. At the same time, they wanted it to be designed for users who may not be familiar with more complex features. The site must also be functional, as in its responsiveness, because some users may uh, use their, their mobile phones to uh, access the website, and also in its fast loading speed. In terms of features, users of the website must be able to see and join potential events of the park. Users uh, also must have a method of communication amongst themselves they should be able to uh, uh, discuss and share their ideas about the park-related uh, topics. User users should have the capability to add their own documents to their website and view them also. In terms of the website management, admin users must have the privilege to make day-to-day -day changes to the website for example, they should be able to do simple things like uh, changing the um, welcome page uh, slider pictures, and also they should be able to approve or reject new account creation requests. Admin users should be able to assign users to roles. There are different roles in the park. Um, some users are renters, some users are owner, and the admin users should be able to assign users to those roles. Not all sections of the web website should be open to all users. 
users will be able to access and use sections based on their role uh, assigned to them. If a user is renter, they might not, not be able to see or send requests or use some part of the website, but if they are park management, um, they have some panels to them, uh, open to them that they can use and they can uh, use the website in that way. Next, I turn into Isabel to talk about the internal system structure of, uh, of the project. Okay, so I will begin with the tech stacks we have used for this capsule project. We separated the client side and the server API. In the client side, we use React to create a single page application. React is a component based library. We also used some components from the Ant Design UI library. Use Bootstrap to add some styling. We also use Access to fetch data from the server API. In the server API, we use Spring Boot. Use the PostgreSQL, Spring Data GPA, and KClock, the server, the security server, to add the security part. Other than those, we also put our database on AWS to add more uh, security. We also use Docker to run our application. We didn't choose those text stacks randomly. Actually, our whole group did some research and uh, choose um, the most popular ones. We thought, okay, we could be benefited in the future. So how does the client side communicate with the server? When the request, when the HTTP request uh, have been sent to the server, it goes to the controller. The controller will go forward to the service layer. The service layer will go forward to the repository layer and then go forward to the database. Each layer returns data back to the cloning layer. In the end, the controller layer returns JSON data back to the client side. In, for our client side, it's a, it's a component-based single-page application. So all those sections here are components. So we do use React Router to navigate between different components. So the end user will see different sections. In the server side, each layer has its function. For example, in the controller layer, the controller layer accepts the request from the client and uh, direct the request to to a specific endpoint. It will and then it will go forward to the service layer. All the business logic is handled at this layer. And then it will go forward to the repository layer. Repository layer are interfaces that uh, that are used to access the database and retrieve all the requested data. The domain layer are Java uh, entity classes used to map data retrieved from the database to Java object. Last but not least, KClock uh, server is implemented in this project to to Im uh, to implement the authentication and authorization. So in general, this is how we create this website. Next, Inia will start to demonstrate the final product. Thank you, Isabel. In this part of the presentation, me, Andy, and Charles will demonstrate the website, but we'll show all the pages we created and their functionalities. I will start my demonstration with the navigation site name. It consists of three parts, the navigation logo, designed for us with the same colors and fonts as the rest of the website, and the RV parking line, navigation buttons that lead to the different pages, and profile that displays the login and register button, 
when a website visitor is not logged in, name of the logged in user, and go back link when user clicks on their profile. When a normal user is logged in and they click on the, on the profile, they will only see the settings page where they can queue and update their account information and modify their notification preferences. But as you can see, I'm logged in as admin. So you can see user details and logs pages. On the user details page, admins can see all the unapproved users who just created an account and are waiting to be approved, and users who were approved and can freely use the website. By clicking on the View Info button, admins can verify or update users' information and assign them privileges. On the log page, admins can see the actions that other admins made in the past. This page is for supervising admins to make sure that they do their job correct. If I press Go Back, it sent me back to the home page. Now I will talk about the home and event pages. We decided to not overcomplicate the home page and make it light. It has an automatic slideshow of the images from the RV park, the About Us section that talks about the RV park and the website, and contact us information for people to contact RV park or admins of the website. Finally, I will show you the events page. When you go to the event page, you will see a full calendar. This calendar displays all the events that are happening right now and will happen in the future. By clicking on one of the events, you can find more information about it, such as a small description, the time it will happen, its location, and who created the event. If you have the privileges of admin, or if you created the event, you can see the update button, which will allow you to modify the event, and the delete button, which simply removes event from the website. If you click right side menu button, you will see a search function with filtering by categories and location, as well as a list of all events that will happen in the future. You can click on the View button, and you will see the same pop-up that I described before. Finally, if you are a registered user with a proof account, you can add an event. When you press Add button, it redirects you to the event creation page. On this page, you can fill the necessary fields to create an event, and even add files such as photos or PDF files to better describe your event. When you press the Create button, a new event will be added to the calendar. This is it for my part. I will leave the rest of the website to Andy and Charles. Hi, I'm Andy, and I'll be going over the login, the register, and the park documents page. So down here in the bottom left corner, we have the login and the register, and you can access each of these forms by clicking in the bottom left corner or by clicking on logging in here or registering here. So I'm just going to create an account really quickly. So to do that, I'm just going to enter some false data. So we're going to have Joe. And each of these fields are being um, tested upon clicking the Submit button to make sure all the parameters are valid. So we're just going to use test email, one, two, three, four, gmail.com. And uh, the email is tested and the password is also tested for password strength. So if the password wasn't strong enough, then you're going to need a more strong password. So once that's through, uh, we're going to click Submit. And these are the notification settings that the user wants to be notified of upon creating the account. So now we're going to, log, we're going to click on Submit. And the account is successfully created. So now we're going to log in. So test, one, two, three, four gmail.com and we're going to enter in the password and log in. So now that we're successfully logged in, I'm going to demonstrate the park documents page as well. So over here this is all the information regarding the current notifications and newsletters and stuff that the admin has uh, created. So to click on it in more detail we just click on detail 
and there is more detail over here the description and all that stuff to actually create the park document we're going to be needing an admin account so to do that we're going to log out and log back in to an admin account so i have that right here and we're going to log in The login is successful and we're going to go to park documents and now that we have these additional parameters that we can show so detail to update the delete uh, you can also filter into different types of uh, documents and stuff but we're just going to add a document right here so we're going to have test document in the notice category and test number three we're also going to upload a file, so let's upload this text file that I have laying around. So the file is successfully uploaded, and now we're going to click Add. And now the file is, the, the notice is successfully added, and we can see the detail. And next up we have Charles, who is going to go over the sale and rent, the forum, the lost and found, and the services page. Hello everyone. I'll be now presenting you the last four categories in our website, so sales and rent, form, lost and found, and services. So just keep in mind that uh, the main components are getting repeated so that I won't be going over each component every single time. So first thing first, in the header you can see that there is a search feature, so if we enter in something um, it will then search by title and return the content based on that as well as a way to search by date so if we enter in a uh, from so this will get the from to the current date if it does no to and then if we enter in a to it will narrow down the search even more looking at the content itself here we can see that we have two tabs so one for sales one for rent based off uh, the post creation and then if we have a look at the post, uh, we can see that there's a slider letting you see all the pictures about the post. Um, this is also mobile friendly, the slider. So that's pretty cool. And then as a way to, we also uh, show the information about the post. And we also have a way to contact the seller. So if you enter in all your information here, um, it will then send an email to the creator um, and also if we are logged in um, you'll also have some special permission depending if you are the creator of this post or if you're admin so if you're admin um, you'll have to enter in a reason why you're deleting just to ensure that uh, content don't get deleted for no reason and then once we have a look at the update um, you can just update a posts and whatnot make sure that everything's how you want it to we could also add something so let's say we wanted to add a picture and you weren't happy with one you could easily do that and then once you confirm make sure that all the information has been changed properly and whatnot and then you can update and then the change will get there get changed automatically uh, moving on to the form section the only difference between this and sales and rent is that there's three categories instead depending on uh, what type of uh, posts you want to create and then as well as uh, because we are logged in now uh, we have the add button so that's why that shows up and then um, here as you can see there's also a response this only this shows you how many response there is for a post so if we have a look at the posts you can see all the re comments in response for a specific post and if you wanted to reply to one you could just reply enter uh, a reply and then post it and then you'll see that reply um, and then the same thing for delete and updating the same thing as sales and rent moving on to lost and found um, pretty much the same thing as the previous two categories uh, only difference is it's a bit shorter than the two others and uh, yeah uh, nothing too too different and then same thing for the services um, they have the same layout same structure as the previous three so thank you for watching i hope you understood how the website functions and uh, take care everyone
Bye-bye.